Stand with me. Get behind them, like I said last week, 
that follow them as they follow Christ. Uh, so uh, my prayer is that you don't become part-time Christian. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right. Jesus. Um, I want the church to, to do greater things. Mm -hmm. I want the people to be uh, even more and even more uh, involved, even more uh, mm -hmm. than we were before. Amen. 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 Uh, Amen. That is uh, my prayer. Uh, let us pray. Grace is God, eternal Father. Yes, God. Yes, God. Dear Lord, we thank you. Thank you. God, we thank you. Yes, God, we thank you. But we have so much to be thankful for. We thank you for just being who you are. You're the God of our salvation. We thank you for bringing us here to your house that we may hear what the Spirit has to say today. Open up our hearts, open up our ears, God, that we'll receive you. That we'll receive what you have for us on today. And Father, I just pray uh, that you'll just remember other things that's going on in the Middle East. I ask you, God, that you'll look upon them. That you'll help them. They need your help, God. And I ask you that you'll intervene. Yes. Yes. We know there's nothing too hard for you, and you told us to pray for those they are in conflict. So we're praying right now. Do all that you can do. Lord, we thank you in advance. We love you, and we honor you, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.
first three chapters of the book of Revelation, we find seven different churches in Asia that Jesus addresses. So today uh, we look at the church of Laodicea. And let me just tell you a little bit about uh, this church. Uh, uh, this church, uh, these Christians were, were known for their wealth. And what happened was they had stopped putting their trust and their confidence in God. And, and so uh, Laodicea, they, they had an earthquake in AD 60, uh, uh, and it just ruined the whole town. So the town, uh, Laodicea, the city of Laodicea rebuilt, right? And so they rebuilt, and, 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 and they, they gained their wealth on, 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 on cloth and, 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 and linen and wool, and they became big time. And in the process, they forgot about God. So, so Jesus here, he's addressing them. He said, I, I, I know your deeds. I know you, your pockets are full. I know you got plenty of wealth. But I have something against you. You've lost and left your first love. So we have to be careful uh, uh, that we're not uh, following uh, the church of Laodicea. It doesn't necessarily mean that our pockets are fat. I, 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 I remember years ago, uh, there was this uh, young man that was faithful. Every Sunday, he would, he would take the the RTD, in, in, in LA it's called the RTD, the public service, it's called the, it was Richard T. Davis, the bus system. And every Sunday he would take the bus faithfully to church. And then God bless him with a car. Everybody looking around, looking around, where's Henry? Where's Henry? God didn't bless Henry with a car. Uh, Henry decides now he wants to wash his car on Sunday. Uh, <laughs> he forgot uh, about God. And you know, and that's why God uh, 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 can't bless some of us because he can't trust us. Yeah. I was neither hot nor cold. Wow. 
Hallelujah. But thanks be to God. He chastised me. He disciplined me. And I came on back home. Amen. Amen. That's how much God loves us. Amen. Amen to God. Uh, so, so, we don't even like things lukewarm, right? <laughs> Some of us are lukewarm when neither hot nor cold. Jesus don't want us to be lukewarm concerning him. And as I said, we don't even like things lukewarm. No one wants a lukewarm drink. We want iced tea or hot tea. We want hot coffee or iced coffee. We can't give Jesus lukewarm service. Why give Jesus something that we don't even want? Let's give him uncommon praise because he's an uncommon God. Don't fall into the category of a part-time Christian. Because a part-time Christian is a part-time believer. The Lord rejects half-hearted efforts of self-serving Christians. God wants us to be full-time Christians. He wants soul custody of us. He don't want your custody. Not custody just on Sunday. He don't want daddy having custody from Friday to Sunday and then mama having them on the weekend, weekdays. He wants full custody. Not part time. Just on one again. Now's not the time. Now we have the time to be part time. To be part time. Give God a hand. Amen. Amen. All right, let's take a look at our text. Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 through 16. Let's read. Jesus here, he says to the church here, he says to the angel of the church in Laodicea, right? These are the words of the amen. <laughs> the faithful and true witness. Jesus talking about himself. Listen to him. He says, the ruler of God's creation. Jesus is bragging a little bit, ain't he? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the ruler of God's creation. He says, verse 2, he says, I know your deeds. He said, I, I know what you're doing. Uh, 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 you may think I don't know, but I see what you're doing. He said, I know your deeds, that you're neither cold nor hot. He said, I wish you were neither one. Which were either one or the other. In other words, Jesus was saying, either you're going to uh, uh, boo boo or get off the pot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, <laughs> he is saying, I wish you were either one or the other. Yeah. If you're going to be cold, just be cold. Yeah. Be out there. Yeah. If you're going to be hot, if you're going to be with me, be in there. Amen. Then said, but, but 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 because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, he says, I'm about to spit you 
out of my mouth. In other words, Jesus is saying, I, 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 I took you in to myself. But, but now you, 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 you've forgotten about what we had. Now you, you, you've lost what we had. He says, I, I took you into myself. Now you're just cold. Uh, or, or you just, you, you need, so, so what I'm doing now, I got to spit you out of my mouth because you're making me sick. All right. So now I got to, uh, uh, I got to throw up and get you out of my system. Mm -hmm. yeah. I said, oh God, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. I want to talk about a part-time Christian a little bit. Part-time Christian. Uh, is a Christian of convenience. Someone who served God based on feelings. Someone who doesn't apply God's word, a part-time Christian would never step out on faith and trust God for the impossible. All right. And if I may, there's some, there's some things that God wants to do in us that will blow our mind. God wants to show us the impossible. But he can't show it if we're part-time. God said, I'm the God of the impossible. I can do things that you never, ever dreamed of. If you just let me. A part-time Christian doesn't engage with the body of Christ. They don't want to deal with church folk. <laughs> but you know, God birthed the church so we can deal with one another. Amen. Yes, sir. That's it. Now, I, ain't, I ain't going down there. She's looking at me funny. <laughs> I ain't going back down there. She's sitting in my seat. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> mm. God worked the church also so we can work on one another, so he can work on us. Yes. You think God needs to be working on sister so-and-so, ah. but well, God is trying to work on you. Oh, He's trying to teach you how to be patient and kind and love. But you so focus on, on sister so and so, and then you want to leave the church. So you from church to church to church to church, running into the same problem, looking for a perfect church. And then if you find a perfect church, as soon as you join, it won't be perfect no more. Hallelujah. Now is not the time to be part time. A part time Christian uh, is like a part time worker on a job in some ways. They get little to no benefits. God wants to. Pour you out some benefits, some blessings that you won't have room enough to receive. Right. But you can because you are time. Oh my God. Jesus. A part time worker uh, don't get full health insurance. God wants to heal not only your body, but He wants to heal your mind. But you're part time. A uh, part-time worker don't get paid vacation. <laughs> All, right. All right. And I'm, I'm here to tell you that God is so powerful. Do you know he will send you on a vacation that's paid? All right. All right. <laughs> And they don't get 
A part-time worker on a job don't get a retirement package. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I was gonna hit on that one, but I'm gonna move along. <laughs> but, 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 but last but not least, a part-time worker, uh, they're the first ones to be escorted out the door when layoffs come. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. You gotta listen. So if you if you if you're functioning part-time, uh, be careful. Now it's not the time to be part time. Jesus. I'm about to close. Word. <laughs> now I, I have a few things I want to say about full time Christians. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen, amen, amen. A full time Christian reads and study God's word. A full time Christian prays according to God's word. A full time Christian spreads the word of God. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. A full time Christian finds peace. In God's word, hallelujah, and a full-time Christian applies the word of God to their lives. They're not hiding behind part-time because they're full-time workers for God. And that's what God is looking for. He's looking for those that are full-time for him. Not sleeping on their job. Not creeping on their job. Yourself. Are you full time or are you part time? Uh, hallelujah. Are you punching the clock as a part time? Also, with full time Christians, uh, there's great benefits. <laughs> Unlike part timers, uh, a full time Christian have great insurance, have great health insurance. They will receive a brand new body. No more pain. Those whom I love, 
my rebuke and discipline. Yes, yes. So, a lot of times we, we go through things and the first thing we want to do, oh, the devil. Oh, the devil is the devil. Get behind me, the devil. It ain't always the devil. Don't you be whooping you, disciplining you. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what he said. He told the church, he says, he says, he says, those whom I love, he loves you. He said, I rebuke and discipline. And so he said, so be earnest and repent. He said, just, just, just repent. He's telling the church, I, I see you, D, I know what you're doing. I still, but I still love you. Even though I'm whooping you. Ah. Remember when mama used to whoop us? Uh, I'm whooping you because I love you. <laughs> Just, some of the old folks don't talk about yeah, right, not, not the young folk. Man. <laughs> so Jesus says, uh, I love you. I rebuke you and discipline you. So be earnest and repent. He says, in verse 20, he says, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, he said, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Amen. Jesus is not going to force himself on anyone. So what he does is he stands at the door. Yeah. Imagine this. Jesus is standing at the door of his house. Right. He's knocking at his own door. Right. Come on. That's it. That's it. How would you feel if you go to your house and you got to knock on your own door? Yeah. 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 To yeah. Yeah. All right now. Come on now. He said, Behold, mm. I, I stand. At the door. Yeah. She needs help. She needs he said, I, 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 I'm not coming in because you're doing some things that I don't even want to see. Ah. So I'm just going to stand there and knock. Yeah. <laughs> but when you repent ah. and open the door, he said, I will come in. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll have supper with you. I'll sit down and we'll do some rubbing together. Yeah. He said, but well, I'm not going to force it. I'm not going to boom, knock it down. He said, I'm just going to knock. And if anyone hear my voice, hard knock your heart. Uh, we open the door of your heart. Don't you feel him knocking? Hallelujah. He's trying to come in. But you won't repent of your sins. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I'm knocking. I'm knocking at the door of my own house. I'm knocking at the door of the heart that I made. Hallelujah. And you keep ignoring the knock. But if you just repent and open the door, he said, oh, come in. And I'll suck with you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will you open the door and submit to his will yes, yes. and be full time? Hallelujah. Oh, that's what he's asking you because time is running out. Don't you see the handwriting is on the wall? Playing time is over. If you ever needed the Lord today, is the day. Now it is the time. Don't you see what's happening? Israel, Israel is our time of peace. Yeah. You can ignore what's going on over there if you want. But God is trying to talk to us as his children. Hallelujah. Will you open the door of your heart and let Jesus in? Don't keep him knocking. Mm. On his own door. Mm. And look what he says. 
in verse 21. Just read that. This wasn't in the text, but just read verse 21 with me in verse 22. It's going to blow your mind what Jesus tells him. He says, in verse 21, he says, to the one who is victorious, in other words, to the one who repents yes, yes, yes. <laughs> from being part-time, he said, to the one who is victorious, look what he's going to do. He said, I will give the right to set. Yes, yes. He said, I will give the right to set with me on my throne. Just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Let's, let's read that slow. He says, to the one who's victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne. I don't think we realize how deep that is. Jesus. Jesus took us from a nobody. Now we're able to sit with him <laughs> on his throne. Yeah. Just as he sat on the right hand of the Father on yes. his throne. Yes. This is what Jesus would do uh, if we let him in. Yes. And in verse 22, it says, whoever has, has ears, uh, uh, let, let them hear what the Spirit says to the church. Now, this is Jesus talking, y'all. Yeah. Jesus said, whoever has an ear, let, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen. We must allow our spiritual ears to hear yes, yes, yes. what Jesus is saying to us. Yes. Good. Good. Yes. Because now is not the time yes. to be part time. Yes. Give God praise. Gracious 